We are seeing stocks edging higher as the earnings season takes center stage. But with higher rates and inflation still top of mind, where should investors be putting their money? We have Mario Veneroso, Kingsview Asset Management Partner, here to break it all down for us. Uh, Mario, we're going to start with what you say investors should avoid. Um, tech stocks have had an impressive year thus far, but you're saying to avoid some big names in that space. NVIDIA at the top of that list, and I will tell you, that's increasingly becoming a popular one for staying away because of the valuation play. Walk me through your thesis. Absolutely, pleasure to be here. Thank you for having me. So to quote the late Wayne Gretzky, one of the greatest scorers of all time in hockey, they asked him, what makes you such a great score? And he said very simply, it's not where the puck has been, but where it's going that counts. And to me, seeing the first half of this year, NVIDIA up literally 200%, extremely extended. It's a trade right now I'd like to avoid, and I'll explain why. The NASDAQ is gonna do a rebalance literally next Monday. And very frothy names like NVIDIA, like Microsoft, who have been over-concentrated within the queues, they're gonna be caught and their positions are gonna be slightly decreased. Now, this AI frenzy, I've been trading these markets for almost 15 years now. I want to give you an analogy of what it reminds me of. Number one, the 3D printing phase back in 2014, where they said 3D printing is going to change the world. Then from there, in 2018, it was the marijuana phrase, where MJ, the ETF, and all the marijuana stocks was also going to change the world. And recently, you can look at the Bitcoin momentum trade in 2020. Now, I'm not going to say that AI, uh, there's no place in this world for it, because I do believe in it, and I'm a proponent of it. And I know NVIDIA is one of the major uh, market players within that space. However, I'm all about fundamentals and earnings. And if you look at last year, in 2022 in March, NVIDIA did $8 billion in revenue. If you look at this March in 2023, they did $7 billion. So to have a stock go up over 200% on all the sizzle and no stake, I would avoid it right now. And technically too, because this is a momentum-based market, NVIDIA is extended. I think there's better plays. And like Wayne Gretzky said, it's not where I've been, it's where I'm going that counts. So I would be forward looking, not backward with NVIDIA right now. Well, Mario, when it comes to some of that valuation concerns, I guess, because you drew on some of the compar comparisons that we've seen to a lot of people call some of those things like 3D printing a fad of the past. Do you see an investment opportunity within AI, just not a name like NVIDIA right now, given the valuation or is this a case, an investment thesis that you're making across the landscape? It's not completely across the landscape, but you have to look at how bifurcated the market is. So I'll give you an example. One stock that I do own that's also a semiconductor is Avago, which has also done phenomenal, hitting literally a new 52-week high today. But the difference between a company like Avago and NVIDIA is valuation. And valuation matters when you manage money for clients. See, I can't buy the fact that something's in the stratosphere because to me, it's just not diligent. I'm not going to chase money and chase returns. I'm going to take a, a sound fundamental um, approach to investing. So I do think there is areas that are less frothy that from a risk adjusted standpoint may make a little bit more sense. But as a whole, I mean, the last two months, if you look at the overall sentiment of the market, it was as if AI cured cancer and, uh, you know, creates rainbows and butterflies every day, which it hasn't as of yet. Uh, another name that you say to stay away from is Microsoft, obviously a stock that's gotten a lot of attention because of AI, but this is a, a bigger play. When you think about Microsoft, the company, they have their tentacles in so many different spaces. What don't you like about it? So I think Microsoft's a great company and I own it for clients and indirectly I own it through the queues. However, the question is where to stay away from now, putting new money now. And again, if you look at Microsoft, it is extended. Right now, the uh, valuation on the S&P is trading nearly at a 20 multiple. If you look at Microsoft, which is one of the biggest proponents in a major ETFs uh, within the market, it trades nearly double. And plus, with the recent announcement with Activision, I think it's going to take time for that to seep through the system. They do have a diverse business, but also, too, look at the rebalance starting next Monday. Microsoft is literally going to go from a 12.8% uh, percent weighting within the NASDAQ to 9.8% weighting. So just with anything, uh, if the overall major index is going to cut its position in Microsoft, I would follow that. And I think there's better plays out there that are not as extended. But between the two, I think Microsoft is 100% less extended than NVIDIA. But overall, it's still extended. 
All right, Mario, let's talk about some of the names that you do like outside of that space. You like Toast right now, the software firm that's helping restaurants handle their payments. It's a stock that has certainly struggled since it went public just about two years ago. What's the catalyst do you see for Toast going forward? So I like Toast because it was a recent IPO. It fell from grace. But the biggest thing about Toast is that they're literally, right as of right now, one of the major market players in small to mid-sized restaurants. And that's a $600 billion industry. And it's a 10, 20, 30 rule. And I'll explain what that means. Right now, they have market share 10% across the US. They have a 20% market share with major uh, metropolitan cities, such as New York. But here's the biggest thing, the 30% rule. They're looking to increase their revenue by 30% year over year for the next three years. And if anyone that is familiar with the platform, they're leaps and bounds other payment processors within the restaurant space. And if we're, anything we learned from the pandemic is people like to socialize. They like to go out to eat, especially millennials. They prefer experiences over material things. And if you look at the chart on Toast, it's recently breaking out of a, a long-term base, a cup and handle, just broke resistance level at 23. Stock is up 3% today, trading around 26. Uh, forward earnings look strong. And because of that, and they're a major, they're one of the first uh, gold miners uh, in the pot of gold. I think if you add all those reasons, it makes a lot of sense to look at Toast. Uh, finally, very quickly here, um, Dow is uh, the one that you really like. Um, walk me through what you like about the stock. Absolutely. So, you know, when one area zigs, another zags in the market. So I wanted to give you a growth play in Toast, but I want to give you a value play in Dow Chemical. Dow Chemical is a company that's been around for over 100 years. And mm -hmm. they make um, ethylene, which is a major component, a chemical component in making plastics. They do over $50 billion a year in revenue. They literally yep. trade at a 12 PE ratio. So it's literally almost half the price of the S&P. But Dow is more of a turnaround story with earnings, and it's down almost uh -huh. a percent today. Another reason why okay. I like it is that it has a return of, equ okay. return of equity of 15 percent. Mario, we're, we're, we're up against a hard break oh, here. No I apologize, but you got your case in there. Kingsview Asset right, Management. Fair enough. Mario Veneroso, good to talk to Be you well. today.